I am now Zen. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, we are going to be doing a revisit, long-term review of the Elegoo Century Carbon. So, for those who didn't see the first video, please do check out the link in the description, the unboxing first thoughts review, and you'll see me make a big boo-boo where I was very impatient and couldn't wait for a print to call before ripping it from the bed and destroying all our hard work. Oh no! We really have! <laughs> well, Sam, it's proven to be a big disappointment to me. Oh, come on. Anyway, with that aside, we did reprint another one and we will show it later on in the video. But first of all, I will go over the key stats for the Century Carbon. <laughs> and they are as follows. Please bear with me because Chris has performed a whole A4 sheet of paper with tiny text. Man with diminishing eyesight really, really struggles. I need binoculars. Bill volume, 256 millimeters cubed. So X and Y and the Z are all 256 millimeters. Very familiar size for those of you who are aware of other brands' bill volumes. Print speed is a typical maximum print speed of 500 millimeters a second. So this machine isn't boasting the fastest maximum print speed, but who prints at 500 millimeters a second anyway? Not me. Typically, you're gonna be printing around about 250, 300 millimeters a second for decent quality. We have an acclaimed 20,000 millimeters a second on acceleration. So that is basically when the machine is traveling from one position to the next. We also have a 4.3 inch touchscreen LCD full color display. The nozzle has a maximum print temperature of 320 degrees C and it's a hardened steel nozzle. So the hot end is capable of reaching above average maximum temperatures. A lot of the other machines that we review, their maximum temperature is 300. This will go up to 320. So it's ideal for more exotic filaments. So this has you covered. The bed is also capable of reaching 110 degrees. And I shall now move on to the design and build quality of the machine. Design and build quality. When we first unboxed the machine, we were quite impressed with the overall build quality. The weight of the machine is a weighty piece of equipment, which normally gives you a good indication of the quality. The side panel is a metal, the frame is metal, the rear panel is metal, the front door is glass, the lid is also glass. Couple that with smooth rods on your Z-axis. You have two at the front, one at the rear. These are driven with lead screws that we believe are coupled with a belt running from one stepper motor. You then have smooth rods on the X and the Y axes, all again driven by belts. So a typical core XY configuration. Inside the chamber, you also have a built-in camera so you can remotely monitor the prints. You have a double-sided textured flexible build plate. One side is dedicated especially for PLA, the other you would use for PETG, ABS, whatever else. You also have an inbuilt filament runout sensor. You have hardened steel direct drive gears in the extruder and a hardened steel nozzle like I've already mentioned, making this machine absolutely perfect for abrasive filaments. If you're wanting to print anything from stock PLA right the way through to PCCF for instance, this machine will do it without any problem at all. You don't have to upgrade nothing. Out of the box, the carbon will do what it says on the tin. Print carbon. We also have some information that multicolour is coming for this machine in the back end of 2025. There is already the plug on the back of the machine that allows you to plug that unit into it. And we also have a poop chute ready to go. That will be coming as an add-on for this machine later on down the line. So that is also putting this machine up there with current manufacturers who are also going down the multi-material or multi-color route. So it'll be very interesting to see how that performs and no doubt we will revisit again once that is released and we've tried it and given you our honest opinion. We also have active carbon filtration for when you're printing ASA or ABS filters out the toxic fumes in your working environment. So if you're working in the same room as the machine, it's gonna filter out the nasties, which is another plus. We also have chamber temperature regulation. 
So this isn't actually heated. It uses the passive heat that is generated from the build plate and the extruder to heat the chamber. There is a thermostat within the chamber that will basically turn the exhaust fan on and off to maintain a stable chamber temperature, which is critical whilst printing ABS, ASA, PC, and other materials of that nature. The last thing you want is any cold air or cold draft prematurely cooling your prints because it will cause them to warp and in the worst case scenario actually come off the build plate and turn to a molten spaghetti mess all inside your posh shiny new chamber. You don't want it. We also have on the side of the machine filament run out sensor. If you run out of filament, the printer will pause, let you know and give you an opportunity to reload with filament so you can resume your print. You can connect to the printer via Wi-Fi or USB for your print files. And the slicer is basically a rebranded version of Orca Slicer. That being said, the machine profile is already an Orca Slicer as well, so you can use either or. So Elegoose, Slicer, or Orca Slicer. What else can I say? So Dan, the technician, he was given the opportunity to have a play with this machine. He broke it. Despite all of the words of wisdom that he was given he printed with the lid on with pla which then caused heat creep the pla filament that was getting pushed into the extruder became soft the gears could no longer grip it and it clogged the extruder so we made him fix it which wasn't a hard task he did it very quickly and very efficiently but he learned a valuable lesson he didn't print pla with the lid on again he ignored the sticker so please bear in mind pla take the lid off save yourself the aggro the same with pet g take the lid off save the aggro tpu again you don't need the lid on for any any of those filaments the only time you really need the lid on this machine is when you're printing with abs asa or pc exotic filaments nylon so on we can wholeheartedly say this machine, since we've used it, has not given us one stitch of trouble. It just prints high quality every single time, and we have printed quite a lot of stuff on it. As you can see, we have a skull, steampunk type themed skull. So this is printed in our own brand, grey matte PLA filament. We have then printed a functioning, you don't get the pen with the print, engine block. Just to show really the tolerance that you get out of the machine and the actual quality works perfectly. That is printed in ASA, so a very, very prolific filament for warping and nasties. And as you can see, it's printed out perfectly. We have a wireless charging stand that Chris made in TPU, printed on the Century Carbon, which works perfectly. The ultimate fidget spinner. Again, just to highlight the tolerance, this one was printed in own brand blue, PLA. This has been a hit. The lads have printed smaller versions because they feel the need to fidget. Another nice print, flame effect print, printed again. So our own brand rainbow PLA filament. And the way that it's come off the spool is quite nice. So we've got a nice yellowy orange at the bottom fading into the red tips of the flames above. I mean, it's printed perfectly. There's no stringing, there's no errors or defects in that print at all. Very, very happy print. And then Chris thought he would really, really push the boat out. But not one, but two, two Eiffel Towers. This one is printed in our own brand Silver Glitter. And we have another one that is part here and the rest is on the build plate. So that one's Glitter Silver and that one will be Glitter Anthracite. But the purpose of this test is basically it is an extremely complex model. There is a lot of overhangs, a lot of, you know, bridging and whatever else and this was printed with no supports as is straight off the build plate and the quality is next level it is really really clean there's not a single issue with that print you've got no stringing across all the retraction points that you've got going up the tower there is no drooping from the overhangs it's just printed perfectly no matter what we've done or thrown at it it's never said no i'm not doing that just exceeded our expectations this machine will allow anybody that is looking to get into 3d printing or even seasoned 3d printers this is probably at the moment the gateway to this hobby or incorporate into your 
workflow or whatever else. Currently on our website, this is selling for 319 pounds, which for less than 400 quid, honestly, is a steal. You can get cheaper printers, but they're not gonna be enclosed. They're not gonna give you the upgraded parts that this comes out of the, out of the box fitted with already. So in my honest opinion, if you can stretch that a little bit further, this is definitely worth considering. It gives you scope. So over the other machines that we sell, you know, typically an Ender, for example, whatever part of that range you're looking at, the build volume will be 220 by 220 by about 250. This is bigger, but it isn't taking up a huge footprint on your, on your desk. It's fully enclosed. So if you're printing with PLA to start with, absolutely fine. And then you start printing with more exotic things as your experience grows you're not gonna outgrow the machine because it will do that. So it is, in my opinion, a definite worthy consideration. Out the box, it's simple to set up. You know, you haven't got to faff around with anything. You just follow the on-screen instructions. You follow the steps. After you've unpackaged it, fitted the screen, removed the screws, you're pretty much good to go. There's nothing else that is technically demanding to be done with this machine. Potentially a color change unit in whatever form factor Elegoo decide to release. That is something else to take into account. So you can start off with this platform. When that's released, you can add it. I'm not sure how many you can add. I'd imagine you'd be able to daisy chain them like other manufacturers so you can have multiples if you wanted them. It's giving you the options. The machine, I would see, I wouldn't say it was obnoxiously loud. It's louder than a, a Core 1, for instance. So you've got your part cooling fan and your heat brake fan, obviously in the extruder. Then you have your exhaust fan on the back and then you're going to have an intake fan on the base of the machine for cooling the main board so the fan noise is quite loud it depends on what material you're printing if you're printing with abs or pccf where your fan speed is relatively low that isn't going to be a problem printing with pla where the fan speed is running at 100 percent then you're gonna notice it. You might not want it sat directly next to you on your desk while you're taking a phone call with a business customer or chatting to your wife about what you're gonna have for tea. It might not be the ideal situation for that, but if you stick it at the other side of your office, it's gonna be bearable. Overall, very, very impressed. We would highly recommend this for the beginner, small batch production, Etsy sellers, anybody that's wanting a decent machine that's capable of producing high quality results at a very low price. This is the one. I don't really think there's much more for me to add, but overall, you know, it's a decent machine. It does what it says on the box and it does it very well. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video, found it informative, intuitive and educational. If you didn't, I do apologize. I've tried my best. Anyway, please like, subscribe, if you have any questions regarding this machine or any other machine, please drop it in the comments box below. We will do our utmost to answer you as quickly as possible. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.